one night I got pulled over by the police and had a large amount of cocaine in my car and I was drunk and high and I was scared to death because this is not who I am. I don't want anybody to go through what I went through. And what that means is to take responsibility. Wow, that's a good one. The most critical test you will ever face is the test for suffering when you did nothing wrong. I've always wanted to be a leader and to be able to have people work with me as a team and a family and, and help them succeed. Gather round, gather round, gather round, clowns. On today's show, we're gonna be talking about forgiveness. What is forgiveness? How does it work? And how do we know if we have truly forgiven the person? Good morning. Good morning. Excuse me, Laura. Morning. Huh? I started experiencing trauma at a very young age. My grandfather, my my mom's um, dad, who um, um, he violated me. You know, he violated me. Um, um, and you know, sexually abused me, and um, he was a raging alcoholic. And I heard the stories of how my mom grew up and, and my aunt. And then they would look at me and they say, "Everything you do is just like your grandfather. Your hands, your handwriting, the way you talk. Um, you're going to be just like him." It was very confusing. And so I shut down. I went straight from high school to the pro golf tour as a caddy on the PGA tour. You know, tour there for one of the best golfers in the world and over, you know, five years. And, and I got off the tour because um, the drug use was getting really bad. And that's when I got into the home building business. I'm creative. I love working with people. I love helping people. And I always hung out with like-minded people where drinking was very accessible. A lot of drinking was very accessible. The, the, the day that I abandoned Brandon, I'll never forget it. It was, I was standing in the garage with two duffel bags and, and, and Brandon's mom was holding him on her hip and she kicked me out and I wasn't coming back. You know, that's where I started, you know, running. In 2009, um, tragedy struck my family and, you know, my, my wife at the time was, um, she had a massive brain hemorrhage called an AVM. All these dark, feelings that I had hidden for so long started really raising their heads all at one time. And everything was being taken overnight. One night I got pulled over by the police and had a large amount of cocaine in my car and I was drunk and high and I uh, got arrested. You know, I got a mugshot and I'm like, oh wow. And I didn't reach out to God or anything like that, but I said, I'm never doing this again. I've become that guy I said I'd never want to be. And, I got drunk and high that night. There it is, there's holdover. That's where it all go down before I see the judge and then I'd walk in here. So we're all, this was the decisions made. Um, I'm done. I need help, but I don't know how to do it. Can you help me? Because my way's not working. I was sitting in jail in two-man tank. And an old man comes in there, 
doing life or murder. Um, you know, said, hey, will you read to me? So I read to him. I read the Bible and my life changed forever. A couple days later, this guy comes in and, and he's being charged with arson and murder and all that. And, and he has this book and he says, I can't read, you want this? And it said Detours by Dr. Tony Evans. And when I was reading it, it was a story about Joseph. And I said, whoa, I can relate to this, this is me. I start reading this book and it talks about the things that confuse me. Why things happen and how we use that for God. It's making sense to me. And so I got up one day and I shared what I was reading out of the book Detours and the whole tank came together. This world is waiting for a generation of godly men who will work from the bottom up, personal, family, church, community. If you're a messed up man and you have a family, you're gonna help make a messed up family. You must say, Lord, before you, there will be nothing more important than the reason I have been created. Work will now be submitted to following Christ. That my family will now be submitted to following Christ. I will fear God. I will take God seriously. Pastor Evans, um, the reason why it's so important and that he talks about it so much, the legacy of a man, and what that means is to take responsibility. And when he says that, he says that and he does it, you know, it's just, um, it just makes sense. You know, to help, and I get emotional because I see a lot of men out there that are lost, that don't have it. On January 3rd, of 2021, um, I was in a dark place. And the last person I thought I would see would be my son. And he reached out to me. He says, you're the last person I thought I would ever call. But I need your help. I didn't say anything magical. I didn't say anything. I was there. And... January 6th, he hasn't had a drink or drug, and he accepted Jesus Christ. And he did that because he saw his dad, actions and behaviors. And he says, now I wanna be just like my dad. The crisis today is the missing man. People ask about what's wrong with our country, what's wrong with our city, what's wrong with our churches, what's wrong with our schools. Why are people turning to alcoholism, drug addiction? Why? Because it starts at the house. It starts with the man. It starts with the father. Pastor Evans, that's why he's so passionate about the man. We have a messed up world because we have a, the missing man. It's time for dads to take back the dinner table. Little did I know that God was going to start with Brandon. And I have the love of my life today. And I want to be that man. What I do today is deliver solutions on daily situations that happen. Me sharing my story, uh, what it was like, what happened, and what it's like today. Uh, the majority of my story is what it's like today. That's the hope. And I try to deliver that, that, that feeling to my family. No tripping, <laughs> no tripping.